Amen. Turn with me in your Bibles to the book of Numbers, chapter number 10. Praise God, I, I this morning want to just give us encouragement and a challenge, if I could, from the Word of God. And uh, I just want you to uh, look at God, where you keep God. Where is God at? What abilities have you given to God? How do you trust Him? How's your relationship with Him? And, and so looking at the book of Numbers, we find that... Uh, a custom began in this book of Numbers that sometimes has carried through even until today that can be a struggle for us, and uh, I, I want to challenge us with it. Uh, we find that God watched over His people uh, as we find the tabernacle being built. We find that God appears to them as a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. And uh, the Bible says in Numbers chapter number 10, verse number 33, And they departed from the mount of the Lord three days' journey. The ark of the covenant of the Lord went before them in the three days' journey to search out a resting place for them. And the cloud of the Lord was upon them by day, and they went out of the camp. And it came to pass when the ark was uh, uh, the, the ark set forward that Moses said, "Rise up, Lord, and uh, thy enemies be scattered, and let them that hate thee flee before thee." And when it rested, he said, "Return, O Lord, unto the many thousands of Israel." Find it wasn't the first time that you would hear that word where the prayer is, let your enemies be scattered. Anyone ever look at the Psalm of David in Psalms chapter number 68, where, where David, he, uh, 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 he is dealing with the ark of, of God, and he's bringing the ark of the covenant back to Jerusalem. And the song that he sings is this in Psalm 68. Let God arise. Let his enemies be scattered. Let them also that hate him flee before him. Praise God. Let God arise and let his enemies be scattered. Praise God. Isn't that a good song to sing this morning? Let God arise and let his enemies be scattered. Let them that hate Him, amen, let them be dispersed, amen, let God arise. Let's talk about this problem that man's had. Ever since the Ark of the Covenant, man has had a problem with keeping God in the box. With me this morning, keeping God in the box, brother Eli, we sometimes, you know, think that, you know, God is compartmentalized by the law. We'll keep Him in a box, and when we need Him, we will pull Him out. So I want to ask you this morning, do you have God in a box? Is God kind of your box that when you need Him, you go and you unpack Him, you find Him, and you say, God, here you are, and I need you for my situation. Have you kept God in a box? Man has always had this problem since the Ark of the Covenant of keeping God in a box. Let's talk about what that box was. You look through the Word of God, you'll find it called the Ark of the Covenant. You'll find it called the Ark of Testimony. You'll find it called the Ark of God. You'll find detailed construction about this ark in Exodus chapter number 25. God told them how to build it. It was to be two and a half cubits or 40 five inches long. It was to be 25 inches high and, and, and tw or I'm sorry, 25 inches high and 20, 27 I don't know why I keep saying 25 27 inches high it's 27 inches wide and you look at the, the dynamic uh, the dimensions of that Ark of the Covenant and you'll find that uh, when you look at uh, the length and the width and the height and you 
figure it all out, that the depth of it was so great because when you add faith into it and the presence of God, amen, the height exceeds the heavens of the height of that. It was wood, it was overlaid with gold. You'll find that it was necessary that it had rings on it. There would be stains that was placed through those rings that the priests were to carry that. You'll find that on top of the Ark of the Covenant, there were two angels that were called cherubims. Their wings were outstretched one to another. And in that 45 inch, inch uh, uh, width, there were those angels and they were facing one another. And there between the wings of the cherubims was the presence of God, the Shekinah glory of God. You'll find that Leviticus says that a cloud was upon it. You'll find in Numbers chapter number 7 that God spoke from it. It represented the presence of God Almighty. May I tell you that somewhere today that ark still exists. We don't know why. I know if you're Harrison Ford and, and, and you're like those adventures, you'll remember them finding the Ark of the Covenant. Uh, they they kind of Hollywoodize it. But can I tell you, we may not Hollywoodize it, but we'll keep God in it. Keeping God in a box. So there is the Ark of the Covenant. It is where the presence of God dwelt. It's what led them. It's what they, they carried. God would dwell between the wings of the cherubims. So inside of that, you'll find that the lid with those cherubims would lift off. And inside of that box, there were some, some articles. Now, I know most may be familiar with this, but, 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 but journey with me this morning as I educate us and as I get to a point. You'll find that inside of there, there was, first of all, there was manna. Manna was this, it was what they ate for 40 years as they journeyed in the wilderness. God provided for them food that they could partake of. And so it represented that it was taste, it was provision for them. So the first element, Brother David, was it was that there was provision in that box to the manna. There was a pot of manna inside there. The second thing that you'll find that was inside of there was Aaron's budding rod. It represents God's authority. Uh, uh, first of all, the manna representing God's provision. Then we find the budding rod representing God's authority. Remember, Moses was to bring those rods in, and whoever's rod bl uh, a blossom would be the man that God had chosen. So the names were written on them, and Aaron's name was written on there. Not only did his rod bud and blossom, but the Word of God says that it brought forth promise. God did something miraculous. It was, it, 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 it was the punishment that was a judgment upon Kor's family uh, uh, for, for offering strange incense. Uh, 14,700 people died. It was God's authority. So we had God's provision through the manna, and then we have God's authority through the budding rock. And then the third thing was this, is that there was uh, the, 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 the law that was in there. It was the covenant that was in there uh, that, that God uh, gave uh, to them the, 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 the Ten Commandments. It was His established covenant with them. And so uh, those three things represented there, provision, authority, and covenant there within uh, the, the box. Can I tell you that we have God's authority in our life? That we have God's provisions in our life? And we have God's covenant in our life? But do we keep it in a box? Now you may say, Brother Sunil, out of those three things, what is the most important thing? I feel that when we look at it from a biblical standpoint, that really the covenant, that uh, tablets in there would be the most important thing, Brother Josh. Because if you turn and you look at 1 Kings 8, verse 9 through 11, you'll find that the only thing that was in there was the table of stones. And you'll find that there it was that the glory of God fell and filled the house. 
So, yes, we need God's authority, and yes, we need God's provision. But, Sister Tina, the greatest thing that we need in our life is covenant with God, a relationship with God. We find His authority, we find His provision, but what does His authority mean to us if we don't have a covenant with Him? And what does the provisions of God mean if we don't have that covenant with Him? So what is a covenant? It is that agreement, it is a commitment, it is a bond, it is a pledge, uh, uh, it is a promise that we have, amen, that we need to have covenant with God. When we have a covenant with God, I want to tell you, this morning we can say this, uh, let, let, the, let the, our enemies arise and let them be scattered because we have a covenant with God. Whatever our enemies are this morning, uh, whether this morning if it's, if it's someone speaking evil against us, when we have covenant with God, amen, if God is on our side, who can be against us? If we have sickness, amen, a covenant with God that God is greater than sickness, that sickness can't touch us and harm us, uh, at least our soul. Even if we look at the enemy of death, amen, he's already been defeated when we have a covenant with God. So thank God for covenant. Amen. And so, whenever we have a covenant with God, when God says it's time to move forward, we got to move forward. I don't believe God wants us staying in the same place, Brother Josh. I believe that God has a time for new, a time for fresh. And that brother Walt, that manna was given fresh to him every day. They had to get out and get it. Sometimes we have to say goodbye to the old, the former things, and we have to say hello to the new things. God wants a new thing in our life. I believe that sometimes there are seasons in our life for jobs. There are seasons for our life for where we live. There are seasons in our life uh, for various things. God sometimes has a new for us, and we have to be willing to move to the new. Now, this morning you may say, well, I'm tired of my spouse. I want to know you're talking a different language. You better just stick with what you have, all right? That's what God wants. <laughs> But there are seasons of things in our life that are new and we need to go to the new. Maybe God will keep at your job for 40 or 50 years. Sometimes God does that, but He's not going to keep everything in your life the same. God's going to change. What keeps us from embracing the new? It's holding on to the old most often times. Why did God say that, that He puts our sins in the sea of forgetfulness? He puts them in the sea of forgetfulness and He chooses to forget about them because He has something new for us. Amen. It's us who like to go into a deep sea diving and find it. Amen. But God says, put it there and forget about it. I have something new for you. Amen. You're not the old man, but you're a new man. You are a new creation. All things are passed away. And behold, all things have become new. Thank God that He gives us new. Amen. I believe it's time for the church to arise, the people of the church to arise, and say, God, we're taking you out of the box. Let our enemies be scattered because we have confidence in you, not the situation. Do you remember when the children of Israel came to the Jordan River, Brother Terry, it was ever flooding the banks. The Bible says that it was that season where there was rain, it was, the water was up, and what are we going to do to get to where we need to go? Do you know what God told them to do? Get the Ark of the Covenant. Amen. And I want you, as soon as the priest's footsteps in, the ground is going to dry up, and you're going to walk over. And Brother Craig, the Bible says that the water would heap, heap upon heap upon heap upon. Can you imagine? Can you imagine that wall as God just puts his hand up and he begins to stop the river and they walk across? Amen. Because they have the Ark of the Covenant. Because when God moved, they were to move. Amen. God says, here I am. Amen. I'm directing you by the Ark of the Covenant. Amen. I have a new place for you to go. Go! Y'all like that story we read about a big city called uh, Jericho? 
Do you remember that? Do you remember the walls of Jericho? You know, you think about him walking around one time uh, for six days and then uh, seven times on the Sabbath. And, and you think about the, uh, the priest blowing his trumpet, the people clapping and shouting, the walls came tumbling down, right? Do you know what? Sometimes we forget that the Ark of the Covenant was there. And that's what they led round about the wall. Amen. When the presence of God is there and when God is leading, our walls will come tumbling down. Amen. But I need to tell you, God is not in a box. And we can't keep Him in a box. But we have to follow His Spirit and allow Him to be God in every area of our life. Amen. The battles that God wants to help us with. You may remember in 1 Samuel where the nation of Israel, they get themselves into trouble and they're fighting against the Philistines and as they're fighting against the Philistines, the Philistines are overtaking them. So all of a sudden they start scratching their head and they say, what are they going to do? Send them to Shiloh. Go down to Shiloh. The Ark of the Covenant is there. You know who they found at Shiloh? Hiding behind the Ark of the Covenant. There was Hophni and Phinehas. They were hiding away. Amen. But the problem with Israel, Brother David, is they kept God in a box. They only took Him out when they needed Him. They only wanted Him in earth situations. Can I ask you this morning, are you keeping God in a box? Are you keeping God in the box? You compartmentalize Him and think, wow, God is church. So if I go to church, I can pray, I can sing, I can worship, and it'll be okay. And then we leave the walls of the church and we leave God in the box of the church. We think the only time we can pray is at church. Amen. That we think the only time we can get help is when we come to church and, and we can share our burden with someone else. We think the only time we can feel the presence of God is when Brother Dennis or Sister Holly is leading us in songs. We keep God in a box. Amen. We think that's the only time that we can feel Him. Amen. But I want to tell you what. It's time we take God out of the box and we apply Him to every day of our life and say, God, I need you to lead me. When you move, I will move. And when you stop, I will stop. I am going to go in the direction you're going. Taking God out of the box. It's time that we don't say that the church arise or that the enemies be scattered. But we say that God arise and let the enemy be scattered. David was so excited. He was bringing the Ark of the Covenant back to Jerusalem. They figured out with Joshua. For a lot of folks, they kept God in a box. They thought God was maintained there in a box. Well, David did bring the Ark of the Covenant back. And Brother David, David danced before the Lord with all his might. Well, I see the Ark. It's coming up the road. I see the Ark. It's coming up the road. The Spirit of the Lord is finally coming home. I see the Ark coming up the road. Friends, I want to tell you that we have got to take God out of a box. And we've got to apply Him to our life intentionally every day. That God, I need You not just at church. God, I don't just need the church, but I need You. I need Your presence. God, I know that with You and I, it's nothing I can do on my own. But, but, but let You arise and let my enemies be scattered. Amen. God wants to work and move. One of the things that we learn that God to do we limit God that God's not able to touch and heal? Do we limit God that God is not able to deliver from demonic forces and attacks? Do we believe that God is not able to speak? That God is not able to give clear direction? I believe this morning it's time that we take God out of the box. Stop confronting the lives of people for what we want to work in you. And allow them to work in you. And I should change. 
Listen, God has all authority. God has authority over everything. The sun came up this morning because God said, come on. Well, Josh, the world is just properly rotated because God has spoken to God and He said so. Do you know why your heart is still beating in your chest this morning? Because God said it's still to beat. He has all of our Amen. He has all of our You know why we have the clothes on our back this morning? Because we have a God that provides for us. Whether you work the job or whether you retire, it's the provisions that come from God. God provides. But His authority and His provisions are in the if we have a covenant with Him. How is your covenant relationship with God? How is your bond? How's the agreement that you made between Him and you? How is it in your life? Have you allowed unbelief to overtake you? Or has faith arisen in your heart? It's time to take God out of the box. Listen. If you have God anywhere else besides being the total authority in your life, you've put the box in your life. It's time for God to be released. How do people live? How do people die? How do people cope? How do people survive? How do people have joy? How do people have peace? Because we allow God to be out. The nation of Israel fought many, many battles. They had much anxiety, they lost much fault because they kept God in a box instead of allowing Him to be God of their life. This morning, all of our anxieties can be removed. We can simply say, God, I take you out of the box. I simply want to give us this challenge. I don't know what your personal situations may be, but I want to challenge you this morning. Don't keep God always. Sister Alice, it's amazing what you said you were expecting God to do a miracle <coughs> actually seems simpler than what you thought. By injection. You know what happens? Sometimes God doesn't answer your prayer or my prayer the way that we think He would. Oh, we have to take Him out of the box and let Him be God. He did it. He may not answer your situation the way that you're intending Him to answer this morning. Take that out of the box and let God be God. Allow that covenant relationship with Him. Allow it to give God the authority over everything in your life. That means you take your hands off of it. Say, God, before I can ever experience your authority, I gotta be in that right covenant relationship. Where God, this is yours. I take my hand off the steering wheel, you lead. God, I take my hand off the controls, you're in control. So, God, in this covenant that I have with you, I give you total authority over every area of my life. You may say, Brother Sidro, that's scary. Listen, God knows how to control and man it much better than you do. So allow him to do that this morning. The covenant relationship says, I give him authority. Let him out of the box. Give him authority over every situation. And in doing so, not only do you give him the ability to have authority, but you also release the hands of God in that covenant relationship to give provisions. I believe that this morning that we serve a God who can provide greater than your mind can imagine. Amen. He's able to provide the need more than what your need is. Even before you ask, He already has it. When you take Him out of the box and give Him covenant relationship and allow Him authority, 
that will give provisions but it all starts with making sure the poor is right between you and him and giving them to the Father. If you're here this morning and you're struggling with that covenant, release this morning and give him the relationship that he desires out of the box and into everything. Allow his authority and his provision work. This morning, would you get in round about these altars? and make right of the covenant that God wants with you. It's a promise. It's a guarantee. It's a bond. It's a relationship. Come, let's work on our covenant with God. Amen. Let's gather in everybody that will around the altars. Everybody this morning. Amen. Say, God, I give you, God, the covenant that you require of me. Out of the box. I want to see your authority. I want to see your perfection. Grace there is that my covenant.